Alexander the Great of uh, ancient Greece, about 330 BC, and the Nephilim. The mystery with the E.T. Nephilim that, were, that he locked underground, covered the openings with various metals, and built pyramids on top of. And uh, as we know, one of the Nephilim were one of the first kings of Athens, Greece, Edictheus. We know uh, of the Acropolis of Athens, the Parthenon, and right next to it is another building called the Edictheum in honor of that king, which is the top half man and the bottom half snake. There, he's not the only uh, demigod to be half man, half animal. Another one, which was a very zoftic, attractive woman, half woman on top and half snake on the bottom, was the uh, enchantress called Viper. Greek mythology is filled with giants. And also we have the giants recorded in the Old Testament. Remember the 12 witnesses, one witness from each tribe of uh, the tribes of Israel. From the exodus in Egypt with Moses, they went into the promised land and they found that there were giants there and that they themselves were like grasshoppers in the eyes of those giants. Now concerning what Alexander the Great did, the mystery with the uh, gates where he locked up these, these, these uh, abominable races called Nephilim, the pendant of Sibylle. Notice the sun rising from the crescent moon and the gates were inviolable. The underground tribes of these Nephilims as a result of mixing with people grew and became more numerous and some of these gates happened to be opened. They will be opened before Christ's, bef they happened to be opened before Christ was incarnated on earth, before he came. Then individual people with faith in the one God undertook their sealing of these uh, gates. The last recorded gathering of the fugitive Hypochthonians, these Nephilim, abominable races of uh, humanoids, mixture with uh, humans with animals, and the sealing of these quote-unquote gates that had been opened is what we read in the text of St. Andrew the Fool for Christ. We also know from a 15th century text whose author remains unknown that Alexander the Great shut out the vile nations, these Nephilim as we call them, with bronze gates surrounded by incomparable glass. He had some kind of a force field uh, that uh, could not be passed, and that is because the copper alone was not enough and could be broken. It was surrounded by a kind of glass incomparable, which probably means some kind of an energy field. So the gates remained sealed until the end years come, the end times that is, and as we saw in the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation, they are opened by an angel of God. And the writer says here, I should emphasize that there is also a text from the 7th century, which vindicates and confirms St. Andrew, the fool for Christ, that is, that Alexander sealed these gates. According to the prophecy of St. Andrew, Alexander the Great campaigned in the East with the mission to close these gates and close the Nephilim in them that had been opened. And our prophecy, therefore, speaks of a divine mission of Alexander the Great. Only from this we understand that he was neither a cynic nor a pedophile or whatever, but a servant of God. Let's remember that uh, there was reference to Alexander the Great in the book of Daniel of the Old Testament, where the archangel Gabriel prophesied to Daniel. Now, why don't we know more about these gates, quote-unquote? In principle, no one knows about these activities of Alexander, since all the relevant ancient texts are carefully hidden. There are many sources that tell us about these, quote-unquote, gates, but these writings are well hidden in libraries in such as the Vatican, Jerusalem, Nevada, and Macedonia, northern Greece. In various books on this subject, you say that the seat of the Nephilim is in the Taklamakan Desert of uh, China, Mongolia, Xinjiang Province, North China. The name Taklamakan in the local language means you go in, in but you never come out. 
So there is an ancient and huge pyramid on top of which once stood the Temple of Baal. So under this ancient pyramid, which is called the White Pyramid, there is an underground state called the Mach Tane, which in the Nabran language means white state, the white brotherhood that even the elders of Mount Athos know about. The Mount Athos area, as we know, is 20 male monasteries. So it's essentially a 12-member council consisting of this white brotherhood, consisting of Nephilim and other primordial demons such as Azazel, Azazelon, Azarandel, and Azael. These four demon angels will be given authority to wreak great havoc on the earth in the last years, the end times, in conjunction with the history and prophecy of St. Andrew, Alexander the Great closed the Nephilim and these unclean abominable nations under the gates, uh, hence under the White Pyramid in 326 BC, as well as gateways located in India. And the writer says, I should emphasize that there are portals in other parts of the earth, as well as in the North Pole. In fact, he closed 72 kings, as St. Andreas tells us. So it's... Uh, these kings who will come out in the last years with their followers and torment the world, they will not kill him but torture him until they accept the sealing, you know, the mark of the beast. St. Andrew speaks uh, in uh, that their power over the earth will last for 660 days, while in the passage that follows from the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation, there is a talk of five odd months, that is for 150 days, because the world will not endure any longer. Imagine what we have to uh, look forward to. Revelation chapter uh, 9, 10, verse 10. And they have tails like scorpions and centers, and in those tails they have authority to wrong people five months. So if you read in the prophecy of St. Andrew, the fool for Christ, it says that they will eat people alive and drink their blood. They will also devour flies, frogs, dogs, and all filth with great relish. Woe to the regions through which they will pass. On top of that, I have to tell you that according to various sources, these Nephilim have farms of cloned humans that they use as slaves and food. Are you surprised? To the Nephilim, humans are nothing more than domesticated animals, and in their language were called goyim, which means edible. The Nephilim cannot come out of the gates except for the most spiritual powerful of them when someone summons them as is done with the summoning of ordinary demons and they call their return to earth the great return and these gates will be opened by the Antichrist in the last years. So it's not co no coincidence that it has been said that the martyrs of these end times will be the greatest witnesses and Christians ever. And this I've translated for you from a Greek article. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.